Hey, I want to wish you guys a happy Friday here with my wife and the little ones and my mom. Hope you have an enjoyable day. Hope you can listen to the broadcast for just a few moments. Hope it's encouragement to you. God bless. Here we are once again at the conclusion of a week. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to join with us here on Bible Tract Echoes. Thank you for listening to this program. I'm reminded here on this Friday of a song. The chorus goes like this. I'm glad I'm serving a God who's able to deliver. I'm glad I'm serving a God who's able to defend. I'm glad I'm serving a God who hears me when I pray. I'm glad I'm serving a God on whom I can depend. I hope that is your thought today. I hope you're glad that you are serving the same God I am. He's a good, good God all the time. Once again, as we jump into this program, we will be in the book of Galatians. If you want to find your Bible, grab that. I'd love for you to look on as well. We're in Galatians chapter number four. We'll get there in just a moment. Before we do that, though, I'd like to give you some correspondence, share with you if I can for just a moment. This email that I received from a Miss Karen in Charlotte, North Carolina, here's what she said, how quickly 12 minutes goes. I had to chuckle after listening to the broadcast in late May with Micah lamenting the lack of time for the Bible teaching after a few minutes talking about a track and sharing other ministry information. She said, I just want Micah, that's me, to know that I appreciate the time he has taken to talk about some of the ministry details as it helps me have a better understanding of BTI. As she says, I don't often get to listen to Bible Track Ghosts because I'm usually commuting to the office at the time of the broadcast, but in this time of working from home, I'm more able, often able, to listen to the program. And she listens through online, the WVCY uh, there in Milwaukee. Great station, and there's so many partner stations that play this program. Appreciate so much, Miss Karen, you taking the time to send this encouraging email email. One of the emphasis is, as you noted there, Karen, is to relay to you, our listeners, some of the behind the scene details of BTI. Our goal is for you to understand how to pray and why we believe that we are a worthy investment of your support. My prayer today is that we, what we talk about, that it will be an encouragement and that we conclude our week on a high note. I'm operating today under the assumption that the vast majority of my listeners are likely Christian people. But I would like to say to all of the folks that are under the sound of my voice right now that you would be very surprised if you knew how many blessings God wants to give you. That is the theme and the thrust of a particular track that I have with me right now called The Gift. The gift track is one that you may think right off the bat, that's a good track for the Christmas time and the winter season. And you would be correct, but you'd also be surprised to find out that this is one of our most popular tracks year round because the message of the gift of God, the gifts that are found in the gift of God, his own dear son, Jesus, it's absolutely amazing the story that's told in this small track. Of course, you know the verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Of course, that's John 3.16. We know that God gave his son. The prophet Isaiah prophesied about that 600 years before Christ came. Paul, the apostle that actually was the human pen of the book of Galatians, where we will be in just a moment, he was speaking of God's son when he wrote, Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Do you want peace with God? Do you long for hope? Do you actually want to seek forgiveness? Did you know that God wants to give you all of these things? If you'd like to know for sure that you are saved, that you have eternal life, that the redemption provided by the free gift of Jesus can be yours, if you'd be interested in that, or if you'd be interested in having this track to give out to those around you, I'd love for you to visit our website. BibleTracksInc.org. This is one of some 38, 39, 40 different tracks that we provide completely 
free of charge. Maybe you say I've been stuck at home for the last little while here, and maybe I only see myself giving out maybe 10 of these tracks in the next four or six weeks. Well, then please order them today. Maybe you say, I'm out and about a lot. Maybe I correspond with a lot of mail. Maybe I could put these in every letter that I send out and you'd like 500 of these tracks. We'd love to send them to you. If you're not familiar with our ministry at all and you'd like to receive a sample packet, it's one each of every track that we freely give all over the world. We'd love to send that to you as well. The announcer at the conclusion of the program will tell you how you can receive that again completely free of charge to be a little punny here for just a moment it's our free gift to you i'd like to take a moment now and share with you a letter from the front that we just very recently received this particular letter comes to us from the country of ghana if you can believe that here's what this person says when asked how did you hear about us they say, I was researching online for gospel tracks to go out with a few friends to talk to people about the gospel. And very fortunately, we saw your site. They say, we, as a group of young youth, have the passion to see souls saved. We would be glad if you could assist us in this regard by being able to reach out to others with gospel tracks. If you could send some to us, we would greatly appreciate that help to our soul-winning efforts. To those young folks in Ghana that are passionate about seeing souls saved, let me say this. Thank you, thank you, thank you for taking the Great Commission seriously. And thank you for letting us know we actually sent some tracks to these young people in Ghana. And Lord willing, they will arrive soon. I'm very excited about the fact that we saw over 7,000 people. Wrap your head around that number. 7 thousand people by the grace of God that just that we know of that accepted Jesus Christ in the country of Ghana in the year 2019. Praise God for that mass quantity of souls. Now understand this, every single soul, just one solitary soul is cause for rejoicing in heaven. Now imagine 7,000 souls. Imagine the choirs of heaven Ringing out the anthem, another soul's come home 7,000 times over. Praise God for those that are working on the Gospels we have there in Ghana. We now turn our attention to our Bible study. I'll give you just a moment to grab your Bible. We are in the book of Galatians. It's around the middle of the New Testament, towards the back of your Bible. And of course, as always, if you need to pull up the Bible app on your cell phone, please do so. I will give you just a few more moments to grab your Bible again. The book of Galatians in chapter number 4. I have been greatly enjoying this study of law versus liberty. You can almost hear the shackles of the law. You can almost hear the chains that bind those that choose legalism over the freeing power of liberty. That of the grace of God by faith. Don't choose the law, choose liberty. Let's look at that today. Galatians chapter 4, for just a little bit of context, let's look at Galatians 4 and verse number 19. Paul very affectionately says this, My little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt of you. What Paul here is saying, we'll get to verse 21 in just a moment, but what Paul is saying here is that he wishes he could be there in person. As you well know, in our modern age, a text or even a letter cannot convey the full warmth of personality. It cannot convey a twinkle in one's eye. It cannot convey the little minute adjustments of the voice that really convey whether it be sarcasm or love, or some emotion. Text is kind of cold. It's kind of formal. And Paul is saying here, I wish I could be with you now to speak to you in person to convey how much this very topic means to me. Verse number 21, tell me, he says, tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do ye not hear the law? For it is written, 
that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise, which things are an allegory. Now, we're going to pause there for just a moment. Understand that Paul, the apostle, was far too skilled an expositor of scripture, of the things of God, to need to resort to allegory. But understand, we have seen through the first one, two, and three, and four and a half chapters of this book of Galatians that Paul has had to try to attack this issue of law versus liberty, of bondage versus freedom from every different angle. He's trying to unload the truck on the Galatians to try to convince them of the error of the ways. And now he's taking the tact of allegory. Here's the question that he asks. Do you hear what I hear? Do you hear what I hear is Paul's question. In verse number 21, tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do ye not hear the law? And then he brings before their consciousness the story of Abraham, a story that would be very familiar to the Judaizers, those that were trying to bind up in legalism these Galatians. He's trying to hamstring the very arguments that these Judaizers would likely use. Understand that these these Judaizers, these legalists, those that wanted to bind up in ritual and religion, these poor Galatians, they made the law of Moses, they made the patriarchs, they made the rituals and the time frame of yesteryear, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they made it seem so quaint, they made it seem so uh, a major part of history, which it very much was, but they tried to hang everything on the law and the prophets. Paul takes a moment here to remind them of their father Abraham, who had made a grave mistake. You see, God had promised him a son, a son of promise. You see, God had promised the eventual son named Isaac to Abraham. But Abraham tried to do things in his flesh. He tried to do things his own way. That resulted in a young man named Ishmael by the hand of his handmaid or his wife's handmaid named Hagar. That was not God's original plan. And now, from that time till present, there have been warring factions throughout the Middle East because of Abraham's foolish and wrong decision. Do you hear what I hear? What you hear is Paul's breakdown of the law, of the fallacies of the law. Join us next week as we continue in the book of Galatians. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great day for his glory. God bless.